Welcome everybody to TYT Sports. It's NBA time. I'm very excited. I have my Clipper shirt out today. It's a Chris Paul jersey from last year. Um, I'm here with Jeremy Rucker, uh, the NBA writer for Rant Sports. Say hello, Jeremy. Hello. How's it going? And today we're going to break down the NBA. We're going to break down the eight teams in each division we think will be making the playoffs. I'm going to start. Jeremy's going to say what he thinks I said that uh, actually isn't true. And, uh, you know, hopefully I will make some predictions that will actually be correct. Uh, we're going to start with the East. Um, I'm going to go from 8 to 1, and then maybe we'll talk about some of the teams that are on the outside. Uh, at 8, I have the Atlanta Hawks. You know, last year they were the 8. Um, I think they're slightly better this year with Horford returning. They have Jeff Teague, who's, you know, quite the point guard. Um, they have some nice pieces but they feel like an eight seed team to me. They feel like one of those teams that's always gonna be mired in the eight seed. Maybe they'll get to the seven, maybe they'll just barely not make it. But I really just don't think they have the juice to really get too much further than kind of the eight seed. Um, at the seven, I have the Knicks. I actually like the Knicks. Jason is uh, putting his arms up in the background as he is a huge Knicks fan from New York. Uh, you know, I mean, Carmelo is still one of the most dynamic scorers in the league. I think it's going to take him a little time to uh, get used to the triangle. But uh, Phil's a winner, and uh, wherever Phil goes, he wins. Um, I think he's going to do it there. They got rid of Raymond Felton, which, are, you know, is hurting them. They did lose Tyson Chandler, which I think actually isn't going to help them inside. But I think they'll figure it out around midseason, and uh, I think they'll be able to get into the seventh seed and prepare for next year when they'll really make a run into the, you know, top four or five. Uh, at the six, I have the Heat. I'm really not excited about this team at all. Um, it feels like they have two and a half players. Um, they didn't really replace um, LeBron with anything that special. I, I don't think Luol Deng is, is, is a superstar. I think he's a complimentary piece. So they have Bosch, they have Deng, and they have maybe half of a Wade because he's not going to play that much this year. Um, at the five, I have Toronto. You know, I know they finished at the three last year and they surprised everybody. They have some nice young talent in Ross and uh, DeRozan and uh, Lowry and Virginalitis or Virginalitis or whatever his name is. I can't pronounce it. It feels like a team that probably had their best year last year is still probably pretty good, but, you know, is going to settle in around the five. Um, at the four, uh, I have the Charlotte Hornets. I actually really like this team. I think Al Jefferson's a beast and there's very few people, if any, that can stop him in the East. Uh, I, I think he's really good. I think Kemba Walker gets better every year. I think Stevenson is the right player to add to those two because he has a lot of heart. He plays that spot in between the big and the little, um, and he's really going to fill well and play some really great defense. You know, I, I think the, the, the Hornets are a pretty good team, um, and they're going to you know settle in at that four. Um, at the three is the Washington Wizards. You know, again, added a nice piece in Paul Pierce. I mean, he's getting up there in age, but um, they're all really, really young guys with Wall and Beal, um, and they needed some veteran leadership, and I think Pierce is going to fill that. You know, Gortat's very underrated up, up, um, up front. Um, you know, Nene, if he can stay healthy, is, is, is a second big man who can really bang. So uh, I like that team at the three, and I think they're considerably better from, than the, the, the four through eight teams. Um, the one, two in everyone's list is going to be Chicago and Cleveland. I personally think Cleveland finishes at the two. I think no matter how good you are, it takes you a little time to get used to the, the uh, new group of players around you and get acclimated to a new system. Um, I think obviously they'll figure it out by mid-season. They're probably going to be pretty good. Um, and then I think Chicago finishes one with Rose back. You know, those players know each other. They have a great coach. Um, but once they get into the playoffs, I actually think it'll be a little bit different story. So I think Chicago finishes in the one during the regular season, and I think Cleveland comes back to take them uh, when it gets down to crunch time in the playoffs. What do you think, Jeremy? Uh, I'm really liking your uh, Charlotte Hornets at number four. I you think they're like a team the to watch this year. Absolutely. I, um, Kemba Walker every year seems to get a little better. Lance Stevenson is a nice addition. You know, regardless of their output, I think um, they're going to have the most confident backcourt in the Eastern Conference with Lance Stevenson and Kemba Walker jacking up shots all season. Um, yeah, I mean, the East is kind of predictable from the four below. Not, you know, there's not too many great teams. That's 
kind of an understatement. There's do, a lot of bad teams in the you, Eastern Conference. Do you agree with the Indiana, leaving out Indiana? Like, do you think they're going to get into the top eight, or do you, do you I, think just they've lost too much? They've lost too much. Yeah. Between George, between Stevenson being gone, David West, he might even be shipped out before the trade deadline. Who knows what's going to happen? There's And after last season, it's really hard to trust them on offense, and with all those pieces gone... I think if they still had Stevenson, they'd be fine. I mean, they wouldn't be great, but I think maybe they would make it on this list. Oh, they would absolutely make the playoffs yeah, with Stevenson. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, yeah, without yeah. him, without Paul George, that's their two best players by far. And they're two players who play very similar positions, and exactly. you can't lose both of them. And they both also are kind of the heart of this team. Yeah, So I, I just think it's really hard to replace that. I don't think you can rely on David West unless you have other things. I mean, when Hibbert's your second best player, you're probably not making the playoffs. Yeah, I agree. How about Brooklyn? I, I left off Brooklyn because I, I, I'm concerned about Brooklyn this year. Originally, I had them on the list. Okay. But they have an owner who's trying to sell the team. Right. They have a new coach, even though I right. love Lionel Hollins. I think he's great. Right. You know, Brook Lopez is already hurt again. You know, That's it's true. questionable whether he's going to play. They have absolutely no depth. And they have no cap flexibilities. They can't go out and get depth. They really just have their starters. I, I don't love Deron Williams. I don't think he has that much heart. What do I, you think? I completely agree. I mean, I think they're paying Joe Johnson and Darren Williams way too much money for the product they put in the floor. And they, they're going to have the same problems as last year, plus more. They lost Pierce. Their coach is gone. The team's being sold. They have no depth, as you said. Uh, even in the Eastern Conference, it's hard to see them make a splash. So, I, I completely agree. So let's go back to the list. So do you think, we all like Charlotte. We both think they're really good. Yes. Do you think they have enough, I mean, I would say no, but do you think they have enough to challenge the top two teams? And do you think they have enough to challenge Washington, which I think are two, is two different questions? Uh, no. I mean, I think the Bulls and the Cavs are far and away the best teams in the East. They're the only teams in the East that I'd put in the top five teams in the NBA easily. And the Wizards are that solid number two. And outside of that, it goes downhill pretty quickly. And I think that starts with the Hornets. They're obviously, I think, better than a lot of other teams in the Eastern Conference. They're going to bolster their wins by playing a bunch of terrible teams four times a year. But it's not a, clo it's not a close competition, I don't think. I think the Wizards are very solid, but they're still a solid step below the Cavs and the Bulls that rise above the rest. And are there any other teams that we left off? To, well, like Some people like Detroit this year with Van Gundy. I I think it looks a lot like the team from last year with Van Gundy. That doesn't really excite me. Uh, yeah, I mean, barring Brandon Jennings becoming, you know, what he was supposed to be all along, I don't, I don't see them going anywhere. I, I like, I like your one through eight. I think, you know, the bottom, the bottom two teams could change a little bit. You never know who's going to surprise. The Pistons might make a no, you know, some noise. Maybe the Magic will pull it together. They have a lot of good young talent. Um, unlikely, but you, we'll, we'll see. I like. I think the Hawks definitely should be in there, especially with Horford, Horford healthy. Horford is fantastic, fantastic yeah, talent. He's a beast. He's a and beast. they made the playoffs last year without him for most of the year, so if he can stay healthy, who knows what they can do. That's true. I, I agree with you. All right, well, Jeremy Rucker, thank you very much. I'm Dan Absolutely. Kastner from TYT Sports. Please subscribe, leave your comments in the below, tell us what you thought was correct and what you thought was uh, idiotic. Thanks a lot. <laughs> NBA Preview West coming up soon.